Hi, this is Dr. Christensen, and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making sourdough bread. And what I want you to understand is this is how I make sourdough bread. It by no means is the way to make sourdough bread. And what I encourage my, my patients and my students to do is to learn from as many different people and sources as you can, and that way you'll adapt what, what works for you. This is what works for me. And so we talked about feeding your sourdough starter. And so here I have my sourdough starter. You, you, can, you can see this, that it's, it's, it's live and it's, and it's bubbly. It's very active. The problem that most people have with their sourdough is they don't feed it enough. And so this is a, this is a friend. This is a, a pet. You need to take care of it. And if you don't, you, you'll lose the, the liveliness. It's possible to restore it. And we'll talk about that another time. But this is how I do it. When I begin, it's important to understand that you use pur purified water. I've got purified water here that, that we, we filter ourselves. Um, we're using the zero water filter system and we're happy with that. And so I've heated the water up. It's, it's actually right at 98 degrees here, um, if you can see that. And so the point is, if the water is a little bit warm, not hot, but if, if it's a little bit warm, it will allow the, the yeast to ferment much, much quicker. And so I've got some, some warm water, and this is one of the secrets that I've discovered, and it works really, really well, is when you make bread, the, the key measurement that you need to pay attention to is your ratio of salt to water. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the batch that I normally make. I, I'm going to use a KitchenAid because that's how I normally do it. And I'm going to pour in four cups of water. What, what is going to drive some of you a little bit crazy is um, what you'll interpret as the, the sloppiness of the way that I do things. And... The, the real world says some people measure precise and some of us don't. But again, the precision in my measurement in making my sourdough bread is going to be the ratio of salt to water. One cup of water to each teaspoon of salt. And, and that's, that's what we, we remember. Now, as far as adding the, the, the sourdough start, what, what I do is, is I just glob it in there. And, and so I, I usually want, want at least a cup or so. And look at the consistency of that. I mean, it looks like the blob or some creature that's, that, 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 that's coming out. And, and again, the precision of the measurement for this really, really doesn't matter. And so I've got a good cup of that in there. What I use to, to stir it with is, is called a Danish dough whisk. And I really, really like these. I've got lots of tools. Some of them I use all the time, and this is one of them. And so what I'm going to do is, is I, I stir the sourdough start and, and mix it thoroughly with the water. And so, so it's, it's not a glob anymore. It's, 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 it's mixed around. What I use to make my bread, I use a lot of different things. I'll use different types of wheat, the red wheat, the white wheat, the hard wheat, the, the, the soft, I'll use kamut, I'll use um, spelt, um, even occasionally the, the emer or the einkorn. Today we're going to be using the, the white wheat. And so what, I, what I've got here, this is, this is the white wheat here. I've ground it. I use a, um, a Wonder Mill um, grinder. And it works, works really, really well. I've got a hand grinder with one of the big wheels. And, and um, I find I don't make bread as often when I have to, to work harder to, to, to grind it. And so, again, what I've got is I've got my white wheat. I'm going to just dump a bunch of that in there. And I'm going to stir it up. I find that if I add the salt directly to the water and the sourdough start, it doesn't rise as, as, as well. And so I like to add some of the flour. As, as you know, the rise is, is what we're after. We want the sourdough to break down the, the carbohydrate and, and the gluten, but we want the, 
the, the dough to rise. And I'm going to share with you several of the, of the dough enhancers that, that we use. Again, I added four cups of water. I'm going to add four teaspoons of salt. So here I've got a tablespoon, which of course is three teaspoons, and then I've got a teaspoon. So I've got four teaspoons of salt to my four cups of water. And again, how much flour do I add? I just add it till the consistency is, is right. You will know when the consistency is right based on experience. And, and that's, that's um, again, it's going to be hard for some of you, but, but that's the way it is. We find that, that if I use a sweetener, that, that helps with the flavor of the bread. It also gives that browning effect. And so, so I've got, I've got some, some honey here. And again, I'm not, I'm not going to measure this because the only thing that, that really matters measurement-wise is the salt in the water. And again, you get, you get a feel of, of, of what you're doing. So I've added some, some honey. I'm going to add some coconut oil. Coconut oil or any type of fat or oil. I'm down to the bottom of my of my barrel here. Any any of the fat and oil that you add um, is going to make the the bread softer. And so for a for a sandwich loaf, this this works just fine. And so can can I mix you know oils? You know, I certainly can, but I've got some, some coconut oil. It looks like maybe two, two tablespoons of coconut oil. Another thing that can be added as a dough enhancer is lecithin. I, I prefer to stay away from soy, and so I've got some, um, some sunflower lecithin. And I'm going to just dribble a little bit of that. Again, it helps a little bit with the texture of the, of the loaf. With four cups of water... Um, I'm going to end up with probably about three loaves of bread. Um, and so, again, I'm almost out of my sunflower lecithin. But I, I add a, a little bit of that. One of the classic leavening agents that, that people will add are, are eggs. And so I'm going to add a couple eggs that our, our chickens laid yesterday. Another great dough enhancer is, is ginger root. And so I've got ginger root here in my, in my spice drawer, and I'm going to add kind of a heaping quarter teaspoon, maybe a quarter teaspoon of, of ginger root. And one of the secrets that I found that makes bread taste really, really good is, is adding a little bit of cinnamon. And here's the trick. You add cinnamon that is going to be below the, the taste threshold threshold, meaning that you can't really taste it, but something in your mind says, mmm, this is yummy, this is really good. And so, so we, we, we add a little bit of cinnamon, and, and again, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon is, is going to work just fine. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stir this up, and, and mix it a little bit. Um, one of the things that I like to, to make is what I call uh, my seedy bread. And, and this is a, a combination of seeds um, that, that we like to use. There, there's a brand out here called Killer Dave's Bread, and, and he's got a really, really delicious bread. And so I've kind of taken ideas from, from the label of his bread to make my own seedy bread. And so we're going we're gonna to add some of the, some of the seeds. And it can, it's, it's composed of sunflower seeds and sesame seeds, Three different types of sesame seeds, black, brown, and white, flax seeds. Oh, poppy seeds. And so I'm just, I'm just going to add that in, into my bread. Um, just just not quite not quite a cup of that. And so this is this is will be my my seedy bread. Again, you could add anything you want to your bread. Sometimes we'll add cheese. Sometimes we'll add you know, dates or, 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 or figs, um, all kinds of different things. And so I, I, I mix it up, and next what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it over to the, to the KitchenAid. 
and we're going to mix it in the kitchen. Another thing that I like to, to add as a dough enhancer is a little bit of acid. And so you could add acid in the form of lemon juice, you can use some ascorbic acid in the crystal form, or what we're going to use today is some of the apple cider vinegar that we've, we've made previously. And so I've got my apple cider vinegar, I haven't strained it yet, but I'm just going to snitch a little bit off, and so I've got a little less than a, than a tablespoon, and we add that. And that seems to activate things and make it a little more lively. What we are interested in is, is a, a loaf that is not too dense. Now it's going to be whole wheat and it will be a little bit denser because it's not white flour. But again, as I've taught my kids through growing up, the whiter the bread, the sooner you're dead. And so we want, we want um, a whole wheat loaf and the white wheat works really well with that. I'm going to hook this to, to my KitchenAid mixer now. I've got my, my dough hook. I put that on and then I'm just gonna, gonna turn it on and we're gonna let it mix. I'm gonna add more flour now. And so, at this point, I just keep adding flour until there's, until it's the consistency. And I've learned with my KitchenAid, the consistency is about right when it no longer clings to the side walls but it still sticks to the to the bottom at the, the center of the of the bowl. We've mixed the bread to the consistency that we like and it no longer clings to the sides of the bowl but it's still stuck to the bowl a little bit and I know by experience that that's that's about right. I'm going to take it off of the bowl and and, 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 and again, you look, at, you look at the consistency of the bread, it's, it's fairly sticky. One of the problems people have is they tend to, to put too much, too much wheat. And, and that will leave you with a, a loaf that is, that is dry and heavy. One of the tools that I, I like is, is this is called a dough scraper. And so it just helps me get, get the dough out of, out of the bowl. And I, I like to, to mix it a little bit by, by hand. And so, again, if you, could, if you look at the consistency of the dough, again, it's fairly moist, it's somewhat sticky, but it's not, it's not overly sticky. And, and that's about what I like. You, you can choose to add uh, you know, a little more flour if you, if you feel it's a little bit too sticky. Um, and again, just, just work, work your dough. Um, it's, it's important to get your hands into it and, and develop the touch and the feel that, that you like with your, with your bread. And, and so you look at this, you can see the, the nice seeds. I can see my poppy seeds and my black sesame seeds. There's some sunflower seeds and flax seeds. Um, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a delicious, delicious loaf of bread. Now with sourdough, as you remember, the key with sourdough is the fermentation process. And so we want to let it ferment or rise for at least eight to, to 12 hours. What I, what I teach people, if you've got a good sourdough start, it's not going to be overly sour. You need to be in charge of how sour you want your bread, not your sourdough start in charge. And so if you feed your start regularly, you'll keep it lively. You'll also keep the, the tartness of the sour down. And so if I want a loaf that's going to be really sour, I'm going to let it ferment for probably 24 or even 36 hours. This, I don't want it too sour. We're going to use it as, as, um, as, as sandwich bread, and it's not going to be too sour. In fact, most people, when they, when they have this bread, um, they don't even realize that they're eating sourdough bread. And to me, that's, that's the goal, is us being in charge of how sour the bread is or how sour it's not. And so to let the bread rise, I'm going to put it right back in the in the KitchenAid bowl and I just I just plop it in there and we want to, to cover it and so I want a moisture barrier and sometimes I'll just use a 
a grocery bag, plastic grocery bag over the top with a towel over the top. Uh, if, you, if you want to avoid the plastic because of the harmful effects of plastic, you can use cellophane and that works well. I'm just going to grab a grocery bag here. And I put the grocery bag on top and then I'll get, if I could choose which dish towel to use, we'll use the purple dish towel and I just put that over there and then I'm going to let this rise and we'll bake the bread in the morning. Okay, so, so to, to briefly recap, the, the water is lukewarm, it's purified water, you cannot use chlorinated water, it'll kill your, your sourdough start. We have the, the ratio of one cup of water to one teaspoon of salt. Of course we use sea salt. That's, that's the ratio. The key ingredients for, for any bread is water, flour, and salt. And so if the water and the salt are in the right ratio, if the dough is the right consistency, then you're going to have a good loaf of bread. And this we added several, several dough enhancers. We added some, some coconut oil, we added some honey, we added some, some sunflower lecithin, we added some, some vinegar that, that, we, that we made. And we added some, some ginger root powder and, and a little bit of cinnamon. Again, behold the, below the, the taste threshold of, of cinnamon. And so the key with all of this, however, is a healthy sourdough start. And so the sourdough start needs to be fed regularly. It needs to be bubbly. It needs to be lively. If it's flat and it's overly sour, um, you're not going to be pleased with your results. So I hope this helps you. Um, tune, tune into our other YouTube videos, and I think it'll help you a lot.